I wrote over 2,000 lines of code to create this model of a garden shed for my model railway. I could have done it much quicker without writing any code at all, but was it worth the effort? The shed is laser cut from using my Creality Ender 3 S1 3D printer with a 10 watt laser cutter attachment. For that I used Lightburn, but I needed an SVG file with the design for the building. I could have created the file using FreeCAD or directly in Inkscape, but instead I wrote Python code to create the SVG file. If it was just about making one model, then that would have taken much less time to create using FreeCAD or Inkscape. But it's not just about one model, and it's not just about what is most efficient. First, how do you measure time, especially when it's a hobby, which programming is for me? I've studied programming at university, including an MSc in computer science, but most of the programming that I've done is as a hobby rather than related to my day job. I'd rather spend time writing code than working on it repetitive lines in a design application, especially if I wanted to create a brick wall with individual bricks, which is what I'm now working on adding. I enjoy programming, especially when it's something challenging and I have to spend time thinking about how to implement it. And despite the popular memes, I used algebra, Pythagoras and trigonometry, which are all commonly used when thinking about graphics, whether you're on a screen or creating designs for a laser cutter. It's more than just writing code, as I could have made the programs much smaller than it currently is. I could have written code that just created the shapes needed for the shed, but instead I wanted to create a program that is flexible enough to design a variety of different buildings with different textures, with interlocking walls that make it easier to assemble, and that's what I hope to create for the future. But for now, I've just added the code for creating a wooden shed. Although it's quite simple to change the scale, so it can just as easily make a version for a HO, double O, G scale, or indeed most other model railway scales you can think of. It's not just about the flexibility I want to add in future, but also about setting myself a challenge and trying different techniques. This includes the Python implementation of the factory pattern, getting a better understanding of collision detection, looking at pointing polygon and intersecting line algorithms although in the end I decided to use an implementation provided by the Shapely module. And I also created a basic version of a tokenizer. When I think about creating code to interpret tokens, in my thought process I'm likening it to one of the steps used in creating programming languages. Something we only just touched on when I studied for my master's degree. But it's also the basis of the initial analysis step performed by artificial intelligence systems such as the large language models used by ChatGPT. I'm not saying that this compares to an artificial intelligence system, not in any way, but more like how understanding how a transistor switch works is a step along understanding how computers work. I think it's also useful to try out some of the fundamental principles associated with computer programming to gain a greater understanding and appreciation and allow me to understand programming better. The bigger thing for me though is overcoming the challenges and thinking about the techniques I could use to describe the building in a file, in my case a JSON file, which could then be used to create the shapes needed to create the physical model. And this is where the tokenizer came in and allows you to include variables and other parameters within the JSON file and have them interpreted appropriately. There have certainly been lots of challenges in figuring out how this works, both for that and some of the other parts of the code, and trying to do it in a way that makes it flexible for other building designs. I took an agile approach to programming, and this made the process easier in terms of only having to overcome a particular problem at a time, but it did mean I have rewritten a lot of the code, potentially thrown away a large amount of code that I had created. I'd also like to create some kind of GUI, which is something I've done on my other programs, but not something I'd consider myself as an expert in yet. I may create a 2D image viewer, and I've even thought about creating a way to represent it as a 3D model, but that's certainly beyond what I've done so far, and it would mean I'd need to think of a way of describing how the 2D files would be described in terms of connecting together to make a 3D model. Though at least initially, it's more likely to be a menu-based system, or at least only showing 2D images of the individual walls rather than trying to create a 3D image. 
If you want to take a look at the code, then the code is all available on GitHub and I'll add a link in the description to a project page on my website. It's a command line program at the moment and it only really generates the one type of shed. Although with some manipulation of the JSON files, it should be capable of creating more different designs. If you don't see this video when it's first uploaded, then it's quite possible I may have added more textures and different buildings by the time you do get to see it. If you just want a program that will make it easier to create different models for a laser cutter, then it's some way off. But perhaps it will achieve that one day. In the meantime, it's been a fun journey so far. Keep an eye out for other buildings I create in the future. Thanks for watching. This video has been a bit more of a ramble about my experience with programming this. But I'll be adding more practical videos on model railways, programming, electronics, microcontrollers and computers in the future. So please subscribe if any of those sound of interest to you. Thanks for watching.